All right, so we're taking another look at our example MBC project from before, where we created a home page that displays a specific greeting. Let's try adding multiple greetings in a list. With Timeleaf, we can use th each to iterate over any sort of Java collection. For example, if we wanted to display a heading for each message in a greetings list, we take our current heading and add the th each attribute to it. This element is now like a for loop. It and any children it has are repeated each iteration defined by the value of the th each attribute. So in this example, we're assuming that we have some sort of variable called greetings in our model. To iterate over each of the messages in that collection, we use this syntax. Much like an enhanced for loop, we're defining a variable, message, that holds the current element of greetings for each iteration of the loop. And that variable is available inside the loop, as well as to the th each element and each of its children. So if we use the message variable in our th text attribute, we should get one heading element for each of the messages we add to the greetings model attribute. So let's jump back to our controller and add some greetings. We can get rid of the welcome message for now because we're not using it anymore. We'll replace it with greetings. I'm just gonna hard code an array of strings as the value for now because th each can handle any kind of Java collection, which includes arrays. Once we've added a few messages, let's rebuild and refresh the browser. Actually, I'm not sure if I ever ran this application. Let's start it from scratch. It looks like I did, but we can always stop and rerun it. Let's check the browser and see what we get. And there we go. We've repeated our heading element three times, once for each message. If we look at our dev tools in Chrome, which we can do by right-clicking on the page and selecting Inspect, we can see concretely that it has actually created three instances of the heading element. All right, next, let's look at some conditional rendering. Conditional rendering just means that some portions of our template will be included in the final product only if certain conditions are met. For example, let's say we didn't want to render any greetings that include the word goodbye. That's not much of a greeting after all. Currently, our template renders every message in the greetings variable, no matter what. If we add a message with the word goodbye to the model in our controller, it shows up as expected. So let's take a look at our template and see what we can do. One simple way to accomplish this is with a th unless attribute. Th unless expects a Boolean expression as a value. And if that expression is true, the element with the th unless is not rendered. Here, it makes more sense when you see it in action. By writing th unless message.contains goodbye, we're saying render the element unless the message to be rendered contains the substring goodbye. We're using the same message variable we used in the th text for this element, which is a simple Java string. That means we can call standard string methods like contains, which we use to check if the message has the substring goodbye. And if we rebuild and refresh the browser, ta-da, the message is removed. We can inspect again to make sure that it's actually gone and not just hidden on the page. As you can see, the element simply hasn't been rendered. As you might imagine, we can write conditions as complicated as is necessary. We can use dot notation to access fields and methods of objects, pass values and variables to them, and do nearly anything else we can do in plain Java right in the timeleaf attribute. There are many other useful attributes, but th each and th unless are two of the most foundational. You can read more about them in Timeleaf's other attributes in the official documentation, which is linked in the text below. Next, we'll be looking at the attributes we need to accept user input and send it back to the server.